Welcome to our lecture for the fourth week of business information modeling. Now this week I'm going to be introducing relatively few new concepts. Much of what I'm going to be doing is going to be just a review of what we've already done. I will be introducing a few new concepts, but not too many. Okay, so this lecture is going to be a little bit different from the earlier two where you learned a lot of new concepts. Here it's going to be much of a review. And of course, as you know, uh, we'll be preparing for our exam next week. And I'm looking at this lecture also as some sort of a review for the exam. As before, just giving you a background before we get off uh, into the lecture itself. So here we are looking at developing web applications. And what we said is that you've got a user who's accessing a website that's going to a server. And of course, all the information for the website is stored inside a database in the form of a relational database. This is the database, uh, the actual data itself. And our information is stored in the form of a relational database. And currently what we are doing is learning how to access information from the relational database using SQL. This is what we are learning right now. We still haven't looked at how did that database come into existence in the first place. Well, that's our next topic. We'll be looking at, okay, how did somebody design the database to be what it looks like? In fact, that is the core of the course, but we'll get to that once we have a good understanding of what relational databases are, what do they look like? So through this process of looking at a few relational databases and also using SQL, you're getting an idea of the simple structure that a relational database actually is. So once we finish those two, we'll, as I've said earlier, come to this part where we'll actually learn how to build a web application that accesses information from the relational database. So far, we've looked at two different databases. One is our basketball database, which is the SBA database. And the second is the college database, which consists of universities, professors, students, and registrations, and so on. We've looked at both of these databases so far, and in this lecture, we'll actually use both of these databases for various examples. In fact, your assignment for the week will also be based on both of these databases. You have already loaded the college database, so you don't really need to do anything. All the data is already there in your relational database. You have not yet loaded this a basketball database, the SPA database, and I'll be posting a file on Blackboard for you to take and download. Okay, so uh, you should be in good shape so in so far as trying out all these queries that we are doing are concerned. Okay, first let's look at some new things that we are going to introduce. First of all, let's take a look at the, the database structure itself. We already know that the college database has information about students, information about instructors, for each, of course, we've got the ID, first name, last name, date of birth, and for students, we've got height, weight, and the state from which they come and so on. So we've got information about students, instructors, courses, which is five different courses in the university. And for each course, we've got the course ID, the course name, and the number of credits for the course. Then we've got information about the various sections of each of the courses being offered. Right, so the course ID tells you what the course is, the section name tells you the name of the section and who's the instructor for the course. So for example, for course ID 10, section ID AA, the instructor is Darius Bookman or Bachman, which is instructor ID 10 and so on. So we've got all that information and of course we need to know which students have registered for which sections and that information is here, registrations. So for example, if you consider course ID 10, section name AA, there are all of these registrations, one, two, three, four, five, six, six registrations for this section, um, three registrations for this section and so on. That's our college database and we've already done some queries on this database. We'll be doing some more queries today on the same database. And of course your assignment will also have queries from this very same database. Okay. Um, so now in database theory, we sometimes refer to the structure of a database as its schema, okay? So here we are looking at the structure of the tables as well as the actual data in the tables. Now for actually constructing your SQL, you don't need to see the actual data. 
Of course, it's useful to look at the actual data so that you can verify, make sure that the queries you're building are all right, but you really don't need it. Just given the schema, you can build the SQLs. So here is the schema for the college database. So in the schema, we just give the name of the table and all the columns in the table. We are not showing the actual data itself. That is referred to as schema in relational database technology. So we've got the courses um, and the, the tables, students, instructors, courses, sections, registrations. And here we see the various columns that are in each of those tables. Here's a schema for our basketball database. You're familiar with this. We did this as our practical activity for the first week. So you've got tables called coaches, venues, players, teams, games, participations. And for each one, you see the, the, the columns which are in the in each of those tables. Now these columns are slightly different from what you saw in the first week, but nothing materially different. I'm not showing the actual data because this database is actually pretty big and there's no space or room on the slides to show you the actual data in these tables. But of course, like I said earlier, to construct queries, all you really need are the is the schema and you've got that here. Okay, so let's get right on with it. The next query we are going to do, query number 45, we had finished in the last class, so I'm moving on to 46. I'm saying here, get the first letter of the first name and the entire last name for each student. Okay, what does that mean? That means we're really looking at saying for the first student, we want D brands. First letter of the first name and the entire last name. The second student is going to be B uh, Kunsch, oh, whatever that is, I'm not able to read it. Okay, B Kunsch, and the third is going to be K Kaftan, and so on. So that's what we are really trying to do here. And of course, I'm introducing that because I want to introduce to you some additional functions which SQL supports. Okay, so the way to achieve this is to simply say select. Now we don't want the entire first name. What we want is the first character of the first name. Right. So here we're saying, take the first name, start at character one, and give me one character. Okay. So this is the starting position, and this is the number of characters we want. This is the string on which we are supposed to perform this operation. Right. So when we say, take the first name, start at the first character, give me just one character, you're going to get the very first character of the first name. And the function that will allow us to do this is the substring function. Okay, so substring first name comma one comma one gets the first letter of the first name. And then of course we want the entire last name. So we just say last name from students. We're not putting any conditions. So that's it. Okay, so that's how you get the first letter of the first name and the entire last name for each student. This explains what's going on here. I'm taking that expression just the first uh, substring first name one one explaining the parts. So substring is the name of the function and the field from which you're going to extract information, that is first name, the column name is first name. And then we want to specify both the starting letter, that is where to start extracting the substring from. In our case, we're starting extracting right from the first character uh, and how many characters to extract starting from that point. Okay. Uh, now we might have said uh, substring first name comma five comma three then what we are saying is start with the fifth character and get me three characters, fifth, sixth, and seventh characters, and get me that substring. Here what we want is substring uh, first name comma one comma one. Okay, so that's, that's really what it is, and it'll give us the required results. Okay, now the question is, we have used some other functions earlier, like min and max and count and average. We've used those functions, and those we call as aggregate functions. Just think back a little. What is the meaning of an aggregate function? When we say something is an aggregate function, we say that we are saying that the value for that, uh, for one row of the result is computed from possibly many values of input rows. Okay. So for example, when you do a count star, you take a whole bunch of rows, you count it all up and just print the count along. So that count is derived from so many underlying individual rows. Okay, so in an aggregate function, the value that is derived, that is displayed or presented in the output, each value is based on data from many rows. Okay, that's what we mean by aggregate functions. Okay, so is substring an aggregate function? Again, just go back here. 
look at what is going on here. For every student, we are printing the first letter of the first name and the entire last name. So is substring an aggregate function? Okay, so be ready with an answer before we discuss so that you're thinking about what is going on rather than just passively listening. Okay, substring is really not an aggregate function because each output element is not derived from multiple rows, right? So if you take the first student, you're getting the first student's first character of the first name. Now that information, the first character, in this case, it happens to be, I think, D. Well, that D is not derived from many rows. It's derived from just one single row. Okay, so each row of output in this case is derived from just a single row of input. There's a one to one correspondence between input rows and output rows. Each output row connects back to exactly one input row. So because of that, this is not really an aggregate function at all. So I'm stressing this because I don't want you to get confused between aggregate functions and just regular functions because this happens to be the first non-aggregate function that we're looking at. So I want to make sure that I remove any confusion. Okay, And as I've already said, this does not aggregate from multiple rows and therefore it's not an aggregate function. We'll be looking at this function and of course we'll also, uh, I'll also introduce to you many other string functions. Substring, that's the function we're discussing. Char length, that is you want to find out how many characters are there in a particular string, right? How many characters? So for example, if it's a name, you want to find out how many characters are in the name and so on. Sometimes in databases, you have to perform these kinds of operations. So char length is a function. Concat is another function standing for concatenate, which is when you're given multiple string values, you may want to combine them all into one string value. That is concatenation. Okay. For example, inside the database, you may have a first name, middle initial, last name. Okay. Now, when you print it out, you may want to print out the whole thing as one single value rather than have them separated into multiple fields. Right? If you separate into multiple fields, you'll see that there are a lot of spaces that occur, but you don't want that. Let's say you want the whole name as just first name, space, middle initial, period, last name or something like that. You want to print it like that. Then you can combine all of those three into one single field and print out just the single field, char length. We'll actually not be seeing any examples of char length and concat, okay? Lower, upper are meant for converting case, right? Most of the time, you, uh, I keep telling you that when you're comparing textual values, MySQL can be case sensitive. I'm saying can be case sensitive, it depends on the setting. I think the default setting that we have installed is actually not case sensitive but you can't take that for granted, right? So sometimes when you want to compare, you may want to say, uh, give your comparison value all in uppercase and the, from inside the database, you pull out the value, convert it into uppercase, okay? So converting to uppercase and lowercase are achieved through these two functions, lower and upper. 